crops. Crops in Minecraft have tons of uses, with the exception of beetroot. They're used for so many things, it's natural that we need to farm them. So, welcome to my brand new series, How to Farm, where I, Catch a Plays, am going to teach you how to farm. It's in the name. This episode, we're taking a look at crops. That includes wheat, carrots, potatoes, and beetroot. Once again, if you're trying to farm beetroot, I'm questioning your sanity. This will not include melons and pumpkins because those have other ways different than these to be able to farm, but I will cover those in a separate episode. In order to farm something, you needed to have the thing. I'm sure most of you already know this, but I'm just going to cover it anyway. Wheat can be found in villages, actually all of these can be found in villages and certain other structures. It's also obtained by breaking grass, which gives you wheat seeds. That's how you get wheat very early on. Carrots are dropped by zombies and villages. I don't think I want to eat anything that came from a zombie. Potatoes are the same, and beetroot. Villages, and the end. Apparently, shulkers really, really, really like beetroot. I, I, why would anyone really like beetroot? Moving on to the uses. Wheat is used for trading. All of them are used for trading. It makes a good early game food source with bread and can be used to breed villagers. Potatoes are the same. They make a good mid-game food source, and you can trade them for emeralds, and breed villagers. Carrots are incredibly useful. They can be traded for emeralds, make the best food in the game. That's in terms of saturation. It means you don't have to eat very much of them. Golden carrots are used in brewing to create potions of night vision and brewing villagers. Not, not brewing villagers, breeding villagers. Beetroot can be traded for emeralds, uh, not sure why villagers want beetroot, and literally nothing else except soup. That soup, I may add, is non-stackable and does not give you a crazy amount of health. So yeah, on to the first farm design. We're starting off with the least automatic of all of them. This is probably the oldest crop farm in the book. It's the methods of doing it have changed over time, but the basic concept is still the same. You pull a lever and it harvests the entire thing for you. Pretty interesting. Now nowadays the way this works is by using waterlog trapdoors as like toggleable water sources. Previously we used pistons or even dispensers, which gets really expensive. And the farm is infinitely expandable all the way down to bedrock. You could technically expand it or put stuff next to it, but it's much easier just to go downwards. I don't think a tutorial is needed for this. All you have to do is this redstone line, your trapdoors, place like that, fill them with water, then one, two, three, four, five, six, so a seven block area. And then drop down a block, seven more blocks. And if you want to continue, keep going seven more blocks. If you want to end it there, put a water stream. I'd suggest putting a wall, otherwise you're just gonna dump carrots all over the ground. Water stream goes into a hopper. Wow, yeah, you definitely need a wall there because out of the over a stack of carrots in there, only six arrived. But yeah, and also I have stuck water streams next to it, so that's just to keep this farmland hydrated, which is a bit of a annoying thing to get in place, but it's easy. So yeah, that's the first design. On to the next one. I would like to point out all the designs in this video have been engineered or re-engineered by me, but the concepts are by other people. I have no idea who originally demonstrated these because they're really old. Like, all of them. This is the semi-auto nano farm. Don't let the big name scare you, it's super simple. And 
lives up to its name of Nano. I'll do a tutorial for it in just a second. First, a demonstration. As you can see, we have this little pod and some farmland. If I pull this lever, it starts to get loud. But if I... Nope. If I... Yep, there we go. If I plant stuff on there, it immediately gets bone mealed and then multiplies a lot. Very useful. Especially if you're about to plant one of the auto farms and you need a ton of carrots. Just put one of these together and then you'll have carrots for the rest of your life. You do need a steady source of bone meal, so I'd suggest having a skeleton farm or a general mob farm. I'll cover those at some point in this series as well. This farm is super small and super simple, but I'll do a tutorial for it anyway. First, you're going to start with your sticky piston and a repeater on one tick going into it. Then you're going to have this redstone staircase up into here. That will be like this. And then you want to have an observer pointing straight into that line. You don't want it to be facing the opposite direction. You want it to be facing this way. Then you're going to put one block away, another observer facing towards it, or I guess away from it due to these arrows, but you want their faces to be looking at each other. They need to be in a staring contest. Anyway, if you stick this sticky fist in there, that completes this part, and that is the observer clock that runs the entire farm. Then you want to put your farmland on top of the piston and create this little C shape right here. In the middle of that, you want to make sure that this has a dent here and put your water. Be careful, this could flood the redstone and you'll have to do it all over again. Next, it's time to do your dispensers. Place two blocks at the end of the C and place a dispenser facing this direction. Then place blocks next to the above the farmland and stick this two dispensers on top of that. Then you want to put a dispenser facing downwards into the same area. After that, you'll just cover it with redstone and that is the dispensers done. After that, fill your dispensers with bone meal. Like I said, you're going to need some sort of skeleton farm because that's a lot of bone meal. This works best in survival because for some reason the game prefers to make you eat over planting in creative mode, so that's why I'm in survival. Flip the switch, hold on the right click button, infinite carrots. There you go. And this is a concept not developed by me, however the entire farm was redesigned by me. Those two farms were called semi-automatic farms. They require player intervention to work. But how do we automate it? The answer is we use villagers. This is a villager-powered automatic carrot farm. Villagers farm this area, try to give it to their friend, it's stolen by the minecart hoppers, and pumped into here. Perfect. I love stealing from villagers, including their entire lives. I, I, I really like capturing them. <laughs> anyway, this certainly requires a tutorial because it's awesome. And I'm using the farm from Impulse SV's villager breeder and then just stuck that little module on the end. Let's start the tutorial. I will add that all the farms in this video can be used with all the crops. I don't know if wheat would work on that. You might get bread if you put wheat in that farm, the automatic one. But other than that, all the farms can have all the crops, including beetroot. But you are getting judged if you're farming beetroot because it's useless. Alright, so you're going to start at the center of where you want your farm to be. Place a slab, waterlog it. Then you're going to come out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and make it a little T shape. I'm using farmland, you can use dirt. I'm just using farmland because I'm creative and it's faster. Then you're going to do that on all four sides. After you do that, you're going to want to connect each little T diagonally. 
you just do it like this until you bump into that area. And all the T's need to have this three block side. After that, fill the entire thing with dirt. The entire diamond. After you build your ugly diamond of dirt, you need to put in light so the crops can grow. The way you do this is stick some sort of light source, so a jack-o'-lantern, sea lantern, or glowstone, needs to be a full block, on the edges of the former tees. Then, one block diagonally, or maybe two blocks, you stick this. Then, you go to the next one, do the same, do the same, do the same, do the same, all the way around. Make sure you put your lights in the right place, otherwise things are not going to grow. Then you need to get the water sources in place. The way you do this is stick a stair right in between two of the lights. That happens on every single one of these corners. Place a trap door to keep the water in, and water lock it. You continue to do this all the way around. Once you've done that, we need to keep the villagers from escaping. So. Go ahead and fill in those blocks. You don't have to, but they look a lot better. And you don't have to use iron. You can use any block. I'm just using iron. After that, just stick some glass on top. It's very nice to see what your villagers are doing, you know, invade their privacy. And then continue that all the way around. And the water sources as well. At this point, your farm should look a little like this. Go ahead and hoe any dirt that is not farmland and stick the composter and sea lantern or glowstone or whatever lighting block you chose above the waterlock slab. Then select any of these sides, the ends of the diamond, and make it a 3x3 three three platform. It doesn't matter what you choose, I've just chosen this one. After that, you're going to grab some rails and some a Minecraft hopper and a hopper as well. A hopper as well, I said. Stick the hopper here, then stick rails, a minecart with hopper, then no, no, not that. Break the rail. Break the rails. Break the rails it's standing on. Stick a trapdoor on top of that. Put a rail on top of that. Break the trapdoor. You now have minecarts resting on top of each other. Stick a spruce trapdoor above that so the villager can't escape. And now you're ready to transport your villagers. I'd suggest either having a farmer that you've already traded with as the farmer or bringing him in first because I've just done some things with those villagers and they're really annoying and for some reason that guy path finds over here even though he can't actually get over here so I'd suggest just getting your farmer in here first if you're curious how to transport those I'm gonna tell you what you're going to need to do is find a village hopefully it's the one that you found a carrot in also I hope you built this near a village, otherwise you've got a long ride ahead of you. Kidnap a villager, and stick him in a boat. You just do that by, like, bumping him next to the boat. Then you drive him all the way to your farm. Now, boats can't go up blocks on land, so you're going to have to use pistons. It's a long process. You could also use minecarts, but you need a lot of iron for that. Of course, me being in creative mode allows me to just do this. We need a mob catching tool in Minecraft. That would be so useful. Anyway, get your farmer in here and then put a villager in this pod. This is where you're destined to spend the rest of your entire life. Have fun. After that, you're going to grab a chest and stick it below your hoppers. In this case, I didn't put the hopper in a very useful place, but basically you'll just run the hopper into a chest. After that, you need to fill your farm up. So if you're using carrots, potatoes, or beetroot, you know my opinion on beetroot now, I'm not going to continue talking about it. 
you could either plant this entire field, or if you're lazy and you don't need carrots right away, or any crop, give him, give him all the carrots, or crops, and he'll plant them for you very slowly, but he will definitely plant them. Y'all are lazy. Y'all are really, really lazy. Just look at you. Just, all you do is walk around. Anyway, that's that farm done. I would suggest putting a roof on it, because lightning turns villagers into witches, and witches don't farm. Yeah, they don't farm. That is going to do it for this episode of How to Farm. If you have anything else you want to learn how to farm, leave it in the comments. I will certainly think about doing it. So yeah, you now have the ability to have multiple ways of farming. And you can get beetroot because you totally need beetroot. Yay. Anyway, my name has been Kester Plays. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Goodbye.